In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the wavetable oscillators. In the Varus TI, we have a selection of 100 wavetables, each of which contains a unique collection of different waveforms. The very first table, which is called sine, is the exception to the rule, as it only contains a single waveform, which of course is a sine wave. All of the other tables contain at least two waves, with the majority having far more than this. Now once you've selected a wavetable, the next thing to do is play some keys and then start uh, sweeping the index parameter, which is assigned to the main controller here. And I think once you do that, the concept of wavetable synthesis becomes quite clear, and that is that you can achieve highly dynamic changes in tone color that are uh, very difficult, in fact, pretty much impossible to achieve with any other kind of oscillator. Now, even at their most basic level of functionality, then, the wavetable oscillators represent a very large collection of different waveforms. Um, and the collection uh, of each uh, bundle of waves in all of the different tables gives them all a unique character. But the real fun comes when you start modulating uh, the index. Now I'm going to set up an LFO to do that for me now. And the easiest way to do that is with LFO2 because you can use the shape parameter here to target index. Shape always targets the parameter which is assigned to the main controller in the oscillator page. I'm just going to set index in the middle now. So the transitions between each of the waves is uh, very smooth. And that's because what happens is uh, for every value of index, what you actually hear is a blend of the two nearest waveforms. However, if you want a, a more stepped uh, sound, so it, what you're looking for there is abrupt changes between the waves, then you can adjust the interpolation parameter. Listen to what happens as I do that. So you can hear it gives a very different feel to the sound. Now when the, whilst the main parameters uh, like uh, semitone, key follow, etc. are all available, um, some of them uh, are slightly different for wavetable mode. Uh, firstly, the sub-oscillator is greyed out here because the wavetable doesn't have a sub-oscillator. And also oscillator 2 has a special implementation of FM. Uh, there are two modes, frequency modulation and phase modulation. And both of them take the entire output of oscillator 1 to modulate the frequency of oscillator 2. Let's just take a quick listen now. So oscillator 2 is set to a sine wave right now. I'll increase the amount of FM. Let's just have a quick listen to the phase mod. So very often you'll find that phase mod will give you a much brighter, harsher sound than frequency modulation. Now we also have a really nice variation on the wavetable oscillator called wave PWM. And that's short for wavetables with pulse width modulation. And in this mode you can apply pulse width modulation uh, to any of the wavetables simply by increasing the value of the detune parameter. Let's listen to another wavetable now. And compare it back to the original wavetable mode. So you can hear that wave uh, PWM adds a lot of warmth to the sound, and so it's very useful for making pads which, which have that digital sound but with uh, the kind of warmth that you don't normally associate with digital oscillators. You can also adjust the basic pulse width of the waveform, um, but first you need to turn detune to zero, otherwise the, uh, this parameter will have no effect. I'm also just going to get rid of the modulation so you'll hear it clearer. So with pulse width at zero, most waveforms will sound quite square and hollow. Uh, 
And then just like um, the square wave in the classic oscillators, as you increase the pulse width, it'll get thinner and eventually disappear to altogether at maximum. And you can target that in the mod matrix as well um, with oscillator 1 uh, or 2 if you're using that oscillator uh, pulse width. So let's listen to some sounds now which make use of the wavetables. I mean, really, I'm barely scratching the surface with this because they're so flexible. Um, I've just made a few pad sounds. That, uh, this is one which uses one wavetable. And I've modulated uh, the shape of the, uh, the, or the index here with LFO2 and also the interpolation rate with LFO1 uh, using a very fast LFO, so it creates a nice little fluttering effect. sound uses two wavetables. Um, but this really just has some very simple modulation. One LFO is modulating oscillator one, uh, the other oscillator two, and a little bit of panning, and really that's all we've, we've done here. And finally, a nice warm pad using the wave tables with pulse width modulation. And a very simple, it's actually a very simple wave table which only uses three waves. And um, just LFO2 randomly modulating the index with a slow uh, sample and glide waveform. <laughs> So those are all using uh, very simple modulation paths. Uh, of course, you can use the mod matrix to get some uh, very complex modulations, especially if you start targeting the same wavetable with several different modulation sources at once. Uh, and the parameters you'll uh, be looking for are oscillator 1 or 2 wavetable index um, or interpolation. And um, if you use a mixture of uh, LFOs or uh, the filter envelope and uh, global controllers like the mod wheel or aftertouch, you can come up with some very interesting results. <laughs> 